Hey, hey, Tim, how's it going? Hey, Dave. Good to be here. Very, very good. You, um, you may not have played on every album, but you definitely got every album to the people. You helped get the music to the people. Look, it's a big team. I've been part of some of the journey. It's been a privilege, <laughs> but um, I think now is it a really interesting season because so many people are, are stuck at home. So it's an awesome opportunity for us to actually reach people. So yeah, you know, I think um, this whole initiative of trying to get kids ministers and people together is um, is going to really help facilitate reaching reaching parents and children. So it's awesome. Absolutely. Now, the reason you're here with us is because we wanted to start off with a bit of a technical question. There's a lot of discussion we're going to have about ministry, but I wanted to address one of the biggest questions that we get at the very, very beginning. Obviously, Hillsong Kids uh, has music going back 2004, almost 20 years now. Uh, and there's yeah. a, that's a lot of music, and it's a lot of music that at this season, people really want to be able to use in their ministries. Now, in the past, that was easy. Uh, you buy a CCLI license and you're good to go pretty much. Um, so the question uh, that we're going to start off today for you is that uh, what, is the, what, are the, what are the main things that you need to know about using Hillsong Music uh, in your live streams or in any kind of context? What's changed? Well, I'm sure all the um, kids ministers watching this are going to want to hear a big legal lecture on intellectual <laughs> property. Yeah, that's what we want. Um, intellectual property. <laughs> So, so I think it's important to know that your CCLI license is, is still very important. Um, there's two main aspects to uh, audio visual that's going to be presented. One is what they refer to as the musical compositions, so the song. And then the second one is the master of what's actually being played back. So the first one is covered by your CCLI license. What CCLI have done is they've done a global streaming add-on. So if your church has that global streaming add-on, which I know many do now, um, you'll be covered for any streaming of that, of that underlying song. And then what we're doing through this time for our songs, and I can't speak for every ministry, but what we're doing for our songs, and even if you own big curriculum for your normal ministry or you've got a big plus subscription, we're open to you during this COVID time, just streaming that content on YouTube and then YouTube will do its thing on the back end and um, claim monetization via content ID, but it's not like a whole lot of money or anything like that, but it, it does take care of it behind the scenes. Um, sometimes because technical systems are what they are, sometimes they do have these automated blocks that kick in. We've done our best to work with the engineering team at YouTube to ensure that, that doesn't happen. Uh, but sometimes it, it unfortunately has happened. So if that does happen, you can email digital delivery at hillsongs.com straight away, digital delivery at hillsong.com, and they'll get onto that immediately and work that through with YouTube straight away, and we can whitelist your channel and, and all those things to make sure that that actually works properly. So, um, yeah, my, my suggestion would be to test something first from a stream perspective, make sure it all works properly. But ultimately through this time, through this COVID season, we, we want to empower ministries to reach children um, because it's such an awesome opportunity to actually, you know, reach people for the gospel. So absolutely. Um, so uh, just a question here. Um, I guess I guess the question is, uh, you're talking about live streaming. So uh, is that okay if a church live streams a service, which is great? But what about um, they record a, a a whole kind of service for their kids and then put it up on YouTube? Is that the same? A streaming and then pre-recording everything the same thing? Yeah, it's generally treated the same. So it's fine for it to continue to work like that. The key thing for us is obviously we don't just want you to repost our content into single songs or anything like that. It needs to be part of your overarching service and your overarching stream. So, um, you know, I, ideally how that how that outworks is then up to your ministry. But during this season in particular, for, for at least the next six months, um, yeah, we just, we just want to empower the ministries to do what they need to do. So Amazing. Very, very helpful. Uh, okay, that's really, really simple. Now, uh, if you're on, watching this on YouTube, there is a bunch, there is a chat. Uh, in that chat, hopefully our team will have typed that uh, email, digitaldelivery at hillsong.com, in case you're wondering. So that's any questions you have or any issues that you're facing with streaming content on YouTube specifically or uh, anywhere, just get in touch with them. Uh, also, uh, if you have any questions, type them in there. Uh, anything that we think, I'll, I'll ask Tim, we might be able to get some of the questions, especially as we go through all of our guests. Um, Tim, like that's the main thing there. That's really the main the main question for you today, and it's it's good coming from an absolute pro. Uh, I guess uh, final question here. We're going to be asking this question of every guest. 
Uh, what do you think will change when, once this whole season is over and we go back to church? <laughs> Not as normal, but what will be the new normal? And from your perspective, and especially from a music perspective, from a uh, music resources perspective, what do you think the new normal might look like? One aspect that you're excited about potentially. I think the exciting part is um, access to people and the consistent conversation of what this actually looks like. And, you know, the the process of discipleship doesn't need to be like it traditionally has. And I, th I think, you know, through there's, there's these mindsets that can kick in just as a result of how this is how we do things. This is how we do things. And, you know, as a church, we've often called those brass values. And what are our goal values and our goal values is we, we want to reach and influence the world. So from our perspective, we want to, we want to reach people in whatever sphere of life they're in and um, empower them to lead an impact in that sphere. And so for us, um, I think music and resources is, is undergirding that um, in a, in a whole lot of ways because there's just so much access to content, so much um, ability for us to be able to speak to people directly through content now and the ability to just jump on calls and, and do this sort of stuff quickly. Obviously, I miss face as an extrovert. I miss face-to-face -face people. I don't know whether anybody's seen that meme. Check on your extrovert friends. They're not okay. <laughs> but, um, you know, for me, this Zoom process is, is vital. But the ability to be able to reach people um, with content and talk interactively with them via socials, via chats, all those sorts of things, I think, is, is fundamental to how we do ministry moving forward. Amazing, amazing. Well, that's it. I feel like uh, it's a cultural shift that may consume content in a very different way, and uh, the church is poised to take advantage of that. Tim, thanks so much for joining us. You are the first out of many guests today. <laughs> really good, really helpful, very, very, good. very clear. Uh, so we're going to be back in a moment, uh, I think, with Ryan Frank, who's up next. Uh, so stick around. We'll be back in a moment. Thank you, Tim.